Hi, it's Jamie with ItWorks3D.com. Today we're going to show you how easy it is to change between solid and flexible filaments when you've upgraded your Lulzbot 3D printer with one of our tool heads uh, based on the E3D Titan Extruder. Uh, we just finished a print in NinjaFlex on here, and as you can see up here on the LCD, it's uh, still holding at the 50 degree removal temperature, so I'm just going to pull that off and show you how nicely that print printed. This is just using just using standard NinjaFlex standard NinjaFlex settings. Very nice print. We're going to use that as a wiper, and now we need to print the wiper's housing. So we need to do that in ABS. So I'll just put that down. I'm going to peel up my blue tape that I put down to keep uh, the NinjaFlex from adhering too strongly to the PEI bed of the TAS-6. It's a good quick uh, adjustment you can make. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to preheat the nozzle to about 220, which is a good temperature to remove the filament. And you'll see it begin to heat up as it's heating up. Uh, a few of the things that are neat about the E3D Titan Arrow, the gear drive that they have is uh, very strong and uh, the filament path is tightly constrained and that makes it really good for printing uh, flexible filaments. Uh, we also offer this tool head in a 1.75 millimeter filament version. Uh, we've been printing uh, both uh, commodity uh, TPU, you know, flexible materials, which are, are more widely available and at lower price in 1.75. Uh, we've also been printing PLA with it. Uh, I've had very good luck with some of these uh, sample prints. You'll notice on here, um, this is 150% feed rate, 200% feed rate, and 250% feed rate. You start seeing flaws here, but that's with the uh, 1.75 millimeter PLA. Uh, and again, this was just an inexpensive, you know, Amazon special uh, $20 roll PLA. Um, we've also printed uh, some TPU. Uh, we've had some, and now I didn't prepare because I can't find my sample, but we've had. Uh, good print quality uh, and good results with the 1.75 millimeter TPU. Now the tool head's warm enough that we can go ahead and uh, remove the filament. Now either from the, uh, because of the constrained tool path, you want to uh, heat it up and remove the filament uh, by e uh, extruding it backwards. So I'm going to movement, I'm going move axis, move one millimeter, extruder and I'm going to rotate it counterclockwise roughly uh, 30 millimeters and you see the gear begin to turn and the filaments rising out of there. Uh, the way you want, the reason you want to do that is um, like with the Lulzbot TAS tool heads you can manually uh, bring the filament back out just kind of pop the idler open and pull it out of there but with this uh, more tightly controlled filament path it really helps to let the tool head extract the filament for you. Not the fastest thing in the world, but it does get the job done. Well, that's extracting. I'm going to go ahead and take my Ninja Flex off the spool arm here. Set it down. And you, usually you can just pull back on the lever here and pop the filament out. This is a good time to change my filament tension also. You want solid filaments to have about three to four full turns uh, tightening, uh, or flexible filaments. Solid filaments only need about one and a half, so half, one, one and a half turns of tightening there. Pull my Ninja Flex out, grab some of this good Colorado made Chroma Strand Labs uh, ABS that we carry. This is premium ABS filament base. It actually smells less, warps less, and curls less than ABS normally does. But the thing that's special about the Chroma Strand filaments, all of them, they're PETG, they're Nova 2008 PETG, they're Nova 1800, 
uh, copolyester and then their ABS is that they all are dyed by them. They start with uh, undyed feedstock, so, and then they dye them, and it keeps the dye percentage low. If you've ever wondered why um, uh, undyed natural filaments print better, it's because uh, some colors take a lot more dye unless you dye them the right way, which is kind of expensive, and that's what Chromastrand does. So their filament performs consistently color to color and batch to batch. So now I'm going back to movement here. I'm going to purge out the old filament. So movement, move axis, move one millimeter, extruder, and I'm going to give it about 30 millimeters of feed. And you notice that that actually purged out really well. We're already getting that new ABS through there. So as you can see, I'm doing this live, and hopefully this is one take, and uh, we'll get, uh, get some ABS printing on here. Yeah, that looks like that's fine. Just to make sure that the printer is ready to go and doesn't have anything stored in there, and you can see our extrude. I may actually want to um, turn it off and turn it back on, but let's just go ahead and see if I just do print from SD, and let's see what happens. So there's my file that's been sliced for ABS now. So yeah, all I did was uh, change out the filament and uh, click print, and, and let's see how it looks. I'll go ahead and pull you in a little closer here so you can see what, uh, what the print looks like and what we get. And yes, gratuitous alignment to make sure you can read our URL there. It works 3D.com. Tool head is cooling down to its 175 retraction target. It's almost there. By the way, that 220 uh, is a good filament changing temperature regardless of the filament. It's a little hot for some PLAs. You can usually get away with 200 C uh, if you're going from PLA to ABS for example. But since NinjaFlex and ABS print about the same temperature, um, I decided to use that. Now the truly eagle-eyed viewers will notice that this printer that I have is not a original production TAS 6. Um, comments on what's different about it. Uh, if you want to play Where's Waldo, um, see uh, who can really see it. Now you see it is cooled, it's came down and got its auto home, it's retracting. It's actually retracting quite a bit. We've seen that happen with old um, G-code. My comment about turning it off in between. We'll see if that works though. You may see me shove the filament back in in a hurry afterwards because that retracts seem kind of long, but we'll see what it does. Yeah, so my advice, of, I'm trying to make this as clean and direct as possible, pull out one filament, push in the other, and away you go, but you may see me trying to just push that in there to make sure it's uh, in the right spot once it's done leveling. The problem is if it retracts too far, uh, it can get up above its feed tube, above the hob bolt, and then it's kind of hard to push in there. Then you have to reload the filament. And this is one of our demo tool heads, one of the first ones that uh, we had going. Uh, if you watch the SketchUp Live about uh, 3D printers uh, a couple weeks back, uh, this was a tool head that they had, that they were using, and bolted it right on their TAS 6, and and uh, I, you know, was ready to help them if they needed help, but they just bolted it on and started using it. And we've had some good feedback from customers along those lines, that it's, you know, pretty well plug and go. We tried to make it that easy for most people. So really, uh, I know this is getting along in the video, but... If you were doing this yourself, you know, this could be just as simple as pop out one filament, load up another filament, and then start printing. Let me just check and see where that extrusion is in here. Oh yeah, yeah, that was in there enough. 
It'll probably over extrude a little bit when it starts printing, but that's okay. And here we go. Now printing's beginning. See a little bit of that over extrusion of the film I was talking about because I didn't trust the retraction and pushed in the ABS, but fair to have the filament ready to print. So there you have it. Going from printing solid or from flexible filament to solid filament on a wall spot TAS 6 without changing your tool head one of the It Works 3D uh, Titan Arrow tool heads. And yes, we are working on the version for the Mini. It's coming soon. Want a sneak preview? Here's one right here. This is what we're working on. Hopefully those will be out soon. Just want to make sure they're right, and there's a couple more things we're testing. And thank you for watching. Be sure to visit itworks3d.com for your Lulzbot and 3D printing needs.